Diabetes insipidus is associated with inadequate arginine vasopressin, also known as antidiuretic hormone secretion, or the renal response to antidiuretic hormone. So polyuria, dilute urine, and increased thirst are characteristic of diabetes insipidus. The hypothalamus is the region of the brain involved in coordinating the physiological responses of different organs that together maintain homeostasis. The hypothalamus have neurons running towards the posterior pituitary, which produce neuropeptides, and will release them into circulation. These neurons are called magnocellular neurons, and they produce the hormone vasopressin, also known as antidiuretic hormone, abbreviated ADH. It will secrete ADH into circulation via the posterior pituitary. Antidiuretic hormone targets the distal part of the nephrons to increase channels, which will result in water retention. The nephrons is made up of the Bowman's capsule, the proximal convoluted tubules, the loop of Henle, the distal collecting tubules, and the collecting ducts. The afferent arterial carries blood into the nephron, forming the glomerulus, the glomerulus will filter blood into the nephron. So water and sodium enters, for example. Water continues along the nephron tubule. 90% of the water gets reabsorbed back into circulation at the proximal convoluted tubule via aquaporin type 1 channels. The reabsorption of water back into circulation is actually the reabsorption into the vasa recta, which is the continuation of the glomerulus and the efferent arterial. The vasa recta here in orange functions actually to secrete and reabsorb things from the nephron tubules. The remaining 10% of water in the tubule continues through the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubules, and the collecting ducts. And it's here at the collecting ducts where the remaining 10% of water can be reabsorbed in response to ADH. Now, ADH, also known as vasopressin, increases the expression of aquaporin type 2 channels at the collecting ducts, but also at the distal convoluted tubules, causing uh, an increase in water retention. Diabetes insipidus is characterized by polyuria, dilute urine, and increased thirst. We can group the causes of diabetes insipidus into four groups. Central diabetes insipidus, primary polydipsia, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, and gestational diabetes insipidus. All these etiologies present as polyuria. And on urine, for example, the urine sample is hypotonic and dilute tasteless, hence insipidus. It's important to rule out other causes of polyuria when doing a urine sample. For example, diabetes myelitis is a differential for polyuria. In a urine sample, in a patient that has diabetes myelitis, you can look for proteinuria and history of diabetes myelitis. Another differential is the intrinsic renal disease, and here you can look at renal casts as well as the presence of blood, hematuria. Another thing to keep note of is if it's frequent urination without an increase in urine volume, suspect urological problems such as the prostate. And these are different to someone that presents with solely diabetes insipidus. Let's look at these different categories, different causes of diabetes insipidus uh, in a bit more detail. Central diabetes insipidus is where you have abnormal synthesis and secretion of vasopressin, of antidiuretic hormone. Examples include familial hypothalamic diabetes insipidus. This form of diabetes insipidus is due to an inherited mutation of the arginine vasopressin neurophysin 2 gene, inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. 
tumors such as craniopharyngioma and pineal gland tumors, which occurs in children mainly, are another uh, important cause of central diabetes insipidus. Trauma and surgery is a very important cause of central diabetes insipidus. Surgery and trauma, for example, you can have surgery around the hypothalamic area, the pituitary stalk. Patients that have spasal skull fractures can also have diabetes insipidus. Primary polydipsia is where you have ingestion of large quantities of water. When you drink a lot of water for whatever reason, This can be because of uncontrolled thirst. The body will tell the brain not to produce antidiuretic hormone as a response. Another cause of primary polydipsia is if patients have excessive IV fluids. This, of course, causes polyuria. The third category uh, for the cause of Uh, diabetes insipidus is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, which means essentially problems in the response the kidneys have to antidiuretic hormone, be it a problem in the antidiuretic hormone receptor or the channels itself. Specific causes include congenital nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, which is an X-linked mutation of the vasopressin 2 receptor. This means that vasopressin or ADH is increased in blood but has no effect on the distal convoluted tubules or the collecting duct cells. Other causes of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus are acquired. Acquired nephrogenic diabetes insipidus include renal disease such as polycystic kidney disease. Acquired nephrogenic diabetes insipidus include electrolyte abnormalities such as hypercalcemia and hypokalemia. Medications such as lithium and demeclocycline can cause acquired nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, which these medications really damage the nephrons and can result in chronic kidney disease. The last category is gestational diabetes insipidus. To understand this, we have to know that uh, antidiuretic hormone is metabolized by the liver and also by the kidney, and it's excreted by the kidneys. Gestational diabetes insipidus can cause an increase in the metabolism of ADH, which means less active ADH. So you have low ADH in the blood. And so those were the four categories of diabetes insipidus. Remember that in diabetes insipidus, the serum ADH levels can be high or it can be low, and this will depend on the cause. Investigations to perform. Because patients presents with polyuria, it's good to perform a urine dipstick, a urine microscopic culture sensitivity, a 24-hour urine output uh, measurement. You can use a diary for this. And it's important to rule out other causes of polyuria, such as diabetes myelitis, as well as some intrinsic uh, renal disease. The most important test to probably remember in um, diabetes insipidus is a dehydration test, which helps with the diagnosis and differentiation of different types of causes for diabetes insipidus. Dehydration test involves getting the person to not drink for up to 12 hours. To understand how the dehydration test works, we need to draw a graph. X-axis is hours. So patient is dehydrated to, for up to 12 hours. The y-axis, the urine osmolality, really how concentrated the urine is. The higher the number, so 1,000, the more concentrated the urine is. And as we know, urine is concentrated when we are dehydrated. By hours 10 to 12, desmopressin is given IV. Desmopressin is basically the same thing as um, vasopressin, which is an antidiuretic hormone, and this is given IV. The administration of desmopressin should make the urine even more concentrated because the body wants to retain water. So you can imagine a normal person undergoing the dehydration test will have an increase in urine osmolality by two to four hours, and this is because the body is adequately producing vasopressin 
And so the body will retain water and will cause urine to be concentrated. By 10 hours, when desmopressin is given, the urine osmolality is really unchanged. You really have adequate amounts of antidiuretic hormone. If a patient has central diabetes insipidus, so no production of ADH, when a patient like this undergoes a dehydration test, the urine osmolality will be low. The urine will be dilute because ADH is not being produced and the person is not retaining water even though they are dehydrated. By hour 10, when desmopressin is given, it will act on the kidneys just like vasopressin and cause water retention. And so you expect to see an increase in urine osmolality. You expect to see an increase, basically a concentrated urine. The dehydration test is important because it can also help differentiate central diabetes insipidus with nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. In nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, there is antidiuretic hormone present. It is being produced, but it doesn't have any effect because of problems in the kidneys. Nephrogenic diabetes insipidus undergoes a dehydration test. The person will have dilute urine because the body doesn't respond to the uh, antidiuretic hormone. By hour 10, when desmopressin is given, the urine osmolality is unchanged. Why? Well, this is because, again, the problem is in the kidneys. There is sufficient ADH, but it cannot exert its physiological effect. Finally, you are able to measure ADH levels anytime, really, 